Hey guys, we're back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Eat Like Ruby podcast. And as we just heard, Shaq is here. <laughs> Shaq's back, baby. <laughs> Shit. So we are back with part two of the Instagram Q&As. Last week we did part one, which was more sort of nutrition training factual questions, I guess we would call it. Yeah. And then today people sent through a lot more, just kind of like lifestyle, mindset, even I think there was a few questions about business like being a coach and stuff so i thought it'd be cool to split it into and shaq's here again he's gonna read them out we're gonna riff on them i feel like you might have more to say on these ones because they're not so like nutrition sciencey but yep. we'll, yeah see say what you want mate you do them anyway what get, have we got first getting into it i think let's get a rose roll what's your favorite quote is that the first one first one for bat what's your favorite quote favorite one at the moment <laughs> is make today count <laughs> Love it. That's my primary fact. That's one I always say in my classes every probably three seconds. Legit. That's just my favorite one at the moment. Make today count. Make today count. Yeah. What does it mean to you? Make the most of every day. Like getting up. Good start. To your plan. <laughs> stick your plan. Make your plan work. Whatever you got, whatever goals you want to achieve, make sure you're moving towards that goal. Make today count, guys. What a way to start the potty. Shucks on, baby. Let's roll. <laughs> What's yours? A problem's only a problem if you decide it's a problem. Why are you looking at me when you say that? Because <laughs> I've decided that you are a problem. <laughs> Love it. What's that mean to you? Nothing is good or bad until we decide it is. Okay. I even spoke to the Queen girls in the live call on Wednesday night about this. Just, you know, when we see weight go a certain way or when we want to stick to our plan and then something comes up and we're now off plan can it be an opportunity can we learn from it can we grow from it can we take it and pivot and make it a good thing it's only a problem if we decide it's a problem yeah i like that thank you it's really good thank you well done how's your training going my training yeah good give us more detail (laughs) get into it yeah it is good it's um i've been Training heavy legs twice a week, which I just love. I would literally train heavy legs every day if yep. I could. Have you come across any hurdles? No, not. That's things good. have been very good, but I've been, like, I work hard for that. I work intentionally for that. Like, I do my heavy legs. I always do my adductor rehab at the end of those. And it's one of those things where, like, you've just done four or five heavy exercises. It's like I could easily bail right now, but I stay there. I do my band work. Do my little Copenhagen's, yep. get it all done. And it's paying off for sure. A doctor's been great, which is always good news. Been doing the one cardio circuit a week yep. with, I think we spoke about this on the last time you were here, Maybe. with the like assault bike, battle ropes, ropes. all that. Yep. Definitely over it, like mentally, just sick of the sesh. Yep. Been doing that for, I'd say maybe like four months now. Yep. Same sesh, just gradually adding in the extra rounds um with the intervals yeah but the session itself i've done that i was doing it twice a week scaled it back to one and then brought in like two zone two cardio sessions yeah so literally just on the bike or cross trainer or something 20 minutes keep the heart rate in zone two that's it yeah and really my sort of theory behind those, obviously zone two cardio, just great for heart health and overall health, eventually will transition those into a run, like two zone two runs a week. Yeah. How's your recovery? Like, what do you do for recovery tips? Shaq just chucking in his own questions like yeah. it's his bloody podcast. I'm here. Let's roll. <laughs> you said let's roll like four times. <laughs> what did you even ask? How's recovery? Yeah, like what do you do for recovery? Like what, what do you do, do, do to recover from a week of training? I do um, I do a big warm-up. So I think I've done this in some YouTube videos. Like I warm up at home because we live right near the gym. So mm-hmm. I feel like if I go to gym and warm up, then it's like by the time I actually start training, I'm like, fuck, I've been in the gym for like 40 minutes. I'm over this and I haven't even started. Yeah. So I warm up at home and I normally will just eat while I warm up. Nutella's always there getting amongst it and just do a lot of like hammy mobility Stretch out the glutes, stretch out my calves, stretch out my lower back. Yep. Yeah. And then hit the gym. So that's probably more, it's probably more like a warm up pre 
like prehab stuff, I would say, yeah, as so opposed so. to recovery stuff. I do the um, what is that mat called that I lay on? Sacralia. That's absolutely not what it's called. I think it's yeah. called like Shakti. Yes. Um. <laughs> I feel like if it is called Shakti, we should remember that. It's basically your name. Well, basically... I think the, the other versions of it called, like, called a muscle mat, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm going to Google it right while we're sitting here. But basically, it's a mat that... What would you even call it? It has like, like little needles in the back. Is it needles though? That sounds dramatic. It's like plastic little knobs, really. I was going to say like we could get them to sponsor us, but I don't think we're really doing them justice right now. <laughs> So, They're like, we'll actually pay you to not talk about our mats ever again. Sold. It is Shakti. So, if anyone's listening, thinking, what are they talking about? S H A K T I. Yeah. Okay. So Shakti mats, and it says here, release mind and body stress with the highest rated acupressure mat on the planet. Okay. <laughs> Big call. So basically, it's a mat, and it's pretty much like the size of your back. Yeah. And it is brutal when you first lay down on it so you just lay down on it like i just go shirt like topless and you lay down with your back on it and when you first roll onto it it's literally oh, like it's hell yeah it's like fire on your back it's like yeah. you're laying down on hot goals yeah <laughs> you feel so itchy because of blood flowing everywhere yeah and i think that's the point is like yeah. blood flow and so you lay on it for 20 minutes and i would say after like two minutes it feels amazing yeah. Like if you can get through the first minute or two, it starts to feel so good. And I feel like it equally feels shit when you peel off at the end. Yeah. That feels brutal. But then when you're off, it feels amazing. Yeah. You're like, I'm so glad I did that. Legit. So I think it is just like a blood flow thing to the back. Yeah. But I love it. I love laying on it. I feel like I could not tell you the science or anything behind this. It absolutely could be a placebo, but I definitely sleep better after it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If I don't do it, I for sure notice the difference in sleep. Yeah, 100%. I'm the same. So I like to do that most nights. If I've done a big warm-up and training session and all that, I don't stretch too much at night because I've done a lot of stretching for my training. Um, But sometimes I will just stretch like over the yoga wheel and stuff. I actually did the video, YouTube video of the night routine. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't put the... Shakti mat in that because I didn't want to have 20 minutes of me laying on the mat in the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did the YouTube of night routine, just like stretches and shit that we normally do at night. But yeah, that's about it. Shak likes to do like sauna, compressions, hot and cold, all of that. Yeah. I, I feel like it just suits me. Like, yeah. I, I don't like- love it. I probably, the hot and cold is probably the thing I get the most benefit from when we do all that stuff. Yeah, I feel like after I've finished the hot cold, the endorphins in my head, it's just like <laughs> calmed yourself down. Oh. You just feel relaxed when you walk out there. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do like the hot cold. Mm, so good. How important do you rate recovery or things you do? I think you've got to find what works for you. And I feel like that sounds so cliche, but like I think people are like, you know, do I have to stretch every night or do I have to do hot and cold? Like whatever. I think you just need to, like, if you feel like shit and you're always sore, work out why. Like, are you not eating enough? Are you not stretching enough? Are you not warming up well? Like, are you not eating enough protein? Do you not get enough sleep? You know, do you tell me that you want to stop scrolling on your phone every night, but you never stop scrolling on your phone every night? (laughs) Like whatever it is, I don't think... I think that's probably even one thing to say is people will have quite shitty habits of like scrolling on their phone and not getting enough sleep and all of that and then be like, oh, I need hot and cold baths. And it's like, no, you need to go to bed. Yeah. Like, let's go to bed first and actually get consistent with that. And then if you want to add in these other things, you can. But I think it's, yeah, I think people skip the basics and get really caught up in like, oh, what do I need for recovery? Yeah. And I don't think you need anywhere near as much as you think. Because yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me when people like, you tell me what I should be doing. What's my goal? Like, <laughs> if you tell me my, what I should do. Shaq's taking it in a whole other direction. <laughs> Keep no, going. You know what I mean? Though? Like, if you tell me I need to stretch like I think, 40 minutes each night, hot, cold. Yeah. You're not going to last. If you find your, your own way of making yourself feel better. 
Yeah. I yeah. think it's like if someone told you to do that and you didn't feel like like there was no evidence of the benefit, Yeah. then you're not going to do it. Like if I told you to go to hot and cold baths and then you were like, holy shit, I feel so much better. That's changed my life. Mm. You're going to keep going. But if you're going and you're like, I'm neither here nor there with this, whatever, you're not going to have that driving force to keep going. Exactly. So I think you really have to just actually work out what's going on with you. Like, am I particularly sore? Am I particularly tired? Like, is there actually a sign here that I don't have good enough recovery? And then start to investigate what that is and how you can work on that. Yeah. How do you stay motivated? How do you stay motivated, Jack? Is that, what it, is that the question? How do you stay motivated? Yeah. I wonder if they mean like, how do we stay motivated or tips on how to... Maybe tips on how you stay motivated. Yeah. I'm interested to see what you say. I have a way I want to say it, but I don't want to say it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's why I was like, <laughs> you go first and soften the blow. Is this, I don't know, it's an age old thing. Like, have a plan. Stick with the plan. If you want to go, you see your goal and say weight loss or like a gym goal, stick with the plan. That's how you stay motivated. Don't be assessed with the end goal. Get comfortable with the process. Yeah. Like, journey. The journey, yeah, legit. <laughs> like, get comfortable with the journey. That way, you're going to keep motivated because you're going to keep progressing, keep showing up every day. Like, that's how you stay motivated. Like, that's what I. That's probably the best way I can say it without saying other stuff. Like, I'm going to say the other stuff. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> here's this is actually a perfect example of our relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a fun story, completely off topic. When we bought our house, we had a. Uh, issue with the real estate Shaq literally calls me and is like I need to tell you what this real estate has done because I need to get you in ruby mode so you can call him because somebody has to speak to this guy the way you speak to people (laughs) and Shaq just told me what had happened with this real estate and it was just a fuck fight and so I absolutely called this guy and he copped the wrath of ruby and rightly so like I wasn't out of line the next phone call I got was like, yep, so this one, uh, everything sorted. Just say, thanks, Ruby, for chilling my ass out. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's her. <laughs> so this Job. is our relationship. Done. Shaq smiles to people up front and I stab him in the back behind. Well, not even a front stab. <laughs> <laughs> what was even the question? How to stay motivated? <laughs> tips, motivation. This oh, God, up. I hate tips. I hate when people ask for tips. Um, oh, like me for tips and bits. <laughs> <laughs> this is just my opinion. Take yeah. what you want, leave what you want. I don't think motivation is really I think. the thing. And I think there was that real big trend where people were like, discipline over motivation. And I'm not a fan of that either. And the reason that I say that, I'm not a fan of motivation or discipline. I think you have to just be so fucking clear about what you want, that it just makes sense to do the things to achieve it. Like if you are like, hopefully I'm motivated tomorrow to work towards my goal, I'd say you've got the wrong goal. Like something's missing there. If you, yeah, if you don't want to work towards the goal, really that's what it is. If you're like, you know, today I'm not motivated or I'm not disciplined, so I'm not going to work towards my goal. I'd say it, you've just missed the mark and you need to get more clear or you need to change the goal or get more clear on the goal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like set your boundaries. Like there's things that I've done in my life and things you've done in your life. If you didn't want to do it, you wouldn't do it. Like for footy, gym, like. Yeah, like I just think, yeah, like with you playing football, like it was never like hopefully I'm motivated to go to training tonight. It's literally as simple as like I want to be a football player. Of course, I'm going to go to training and train for football. Like it actually just makes sense. And so if you're in a position like you would assume this person is talking about gym or nutrition or weight loss or like, you know, that's actually what we're here for. (laughs) If that's what the thing is, I would say you've got to get so clear on the goal. And often when we say like, you know, if, if it's like, for example, I need to be motivated to go to gym why do you want to go to gym? Because I want to lose weight or because I want to tone up. And you need to 
pulls out a part and gets so clear on what the actual goal, what the actual driving force behind that is. People say like, um, you know, people say like, find your why. And I think that that just sounds so lame. Shucks rolling his eyes. He gets it. But <laughs> I think you just have to know and be so clear on what the actual goal is. Like don't settle for surface level like I just want weight loss or I just want to turn up. If we really pull that apart, if that that's a convo, it's like, why do you want to go to, you know, I'm not motivated to go to the gym. Why do you want to go to the gym? Because I want to lose weight. Why do you want to lose weight? People start to say things like, you know, because I feel like shit in my body. When do you feel like shit in your body? When I'm at the beach, I, I rug up. Everyone's in bikinis and I'm fully dressed and I feel like shit. Okay, so the goal here is that you actually don't want to feel like shit. Yeah. The goal is not to go to gym. Like if we really put, peel back the layers, there's a big underlying thing here that's like you're actually sitting on the beach in tracksuit pants and a jumper because you feel like shit. If that doesn't light a fucking fire under your ass, nothing will. Legit. <laughs> like, and I'm sorry if you're listening to this with kids in your car or whatever. <laughs> but honestly, like you just have to – peel back that surface level shit and really get so clear on what it is that you want. Mm. Even, you know, a lot of people in that same scenario, like if I want to turn up and why do you want to turn up? Because I feel like shit about my body. When do you feel like shit about my body? I don't want to be int- intimate with my partner. Like again, that is a huge friggin' thing in your life. If you're like, I actually feel so shit that I don't want to be intimate with my partner and it's affecting my relationship. That's the goal. Yeah. Like going to gym isn't the goal. So you've got to really get clear on what that is for yourself. And you don't even have to tell anyone. Like obviously those can be very private and, or emotional things to deal with. Like it can be a heavy thing to deal with. But you've got to really tap into like what is it? Like don't just settle for like, oh, I'd like to lose some weight. Because that's not going to motivate you. No. Like it's really not. So you've got to just, yeah, get so clear on the goal. Like when I think about anything we do, like when I think about Eat Like Ruby, like – we didn't have to be motivated to come down here today and record a podcast. It's just like, you know, for 10 years, I've been building this company. I absolutely love it. I have so many goals for my personal life, professional life, whatever. It actually just makes sense. It never crossed my mind to not come here today. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Every day when I show up, it doesn't even cross my mind to think like, do I want to work in this company today? Yeah. Absolutely, exactly. fucking lutely I do. I Like, <laughs> I could not want this more. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's you. just like... The things that you do every day just naturally go that way because you're like, the shit that I want and the shit that I'm working towards is just so and so set in stone. It actually wouldn't make sense to get up and do something else. Yeah, I I don't understand when people don't work towards their goals. Like I actually don't understand it. <laughs> and I would say it comes back to what we just said, like you haven't you either haven't really stripped it back and found what the goal is. You just actually haven't found the goal in the first place. Like you haven't really found your thing. That's just like, get up and fucking go. Like try and keep me in bed. No way. Let's actually go. Yeah. You've got one life. That's it. Like if we want to take it in that direction, (laughs) why people do not run towards their fucking goals like they're on fire. I will never know. It's, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> like, like, I I can't relate to that. But, you know, it's, it's a massive thing. I'd say that's the number one asked question in the fitness industry. How do I get yeah. motivated? And I would say you really just have to work out exactly what you want to get out of your nutrition and training. Yeah. Honestly, like, it's just about making a plan, surrounding yourself with good people, and then doing it. Yeah, that's actually such a good point. Surround yourself with good bloody people. Good like, oh, I think about our life and there's never a discussion about motivation or discipline or like, can we be bothered? Like, we just get up every day and I'm just on the laptop fucking let's go, eat like Ruby. You go to gym, you go home, like your shoulder, Rico. Think about that. Like, all of those shitty little exercises, everything you did with the band three times a day, like on in the bloody lounge room with the coat hanger, like doing the reps with the coat hanger. When you think about that, like you weren't like, oh, I'm motivated to do these reps with the coat hanger. But you're like, the motivation when I strip this back and I pull this apart is I want to be able to use my shoulder again. Yeah. Like it's a no brainer that I will stand here three times a day and do these reps with this coat hanger. Legit. So that's like off topic. And that's back to our last point. But you know, like what it is that you want and it just wouldn't make sense to not do the things to make it happen but like coming back to being surrounded by the right people like 
we just get up every day and it's like gym, it's work, it's all these things like we're just like, what do we want? Okay, how do we work towards it? Let's do the damn thing. And I couldn't even imagine. Imagine if like one of us was different. <laughs> it's weird. Like, and yeah, like it's odd. It'd be yeah. really hard. Like especially even like the other spectrum, like being around negative people. It's just. Oh, it, yeah, it, for sure. It drains it. Gives me a shit. I can't like. 100%. I can't cope with it. This is why we just hang out with each other in the tower. This is why like the biggest reason for me pushing out my job and getting a yeah. my goal. Like. Yeah. And so many people are in that situation where they have like a negative work environment and that's like eight hours of your day. Yeah, like that's, You can't get that back. <laughs> you can't. Make today count. Legit. <laughs> Brand it. <laughs> the biggest reason you think people don't achieve their goals. Yeah, we did kind of answer that, but I would... Honestly, this- if that's in... I always, um, I just assume that these are kind of in relation to nutrition and training, like health goals, fitness goals, body comp goals. Yeah, let's assume that. Yeah, I would say. So what did they say? What's the, what's the reason people don't assume that? The biggest reason you think people don't achieve their goals. I would say absolutely what we just riffed on. Like yeah. you, you just haven't gotten super clear on that goal and found that thing that you just genuinely want. Um, I would say that that's one. I would say with nutrition and training, another big reason is the lack of really understanding and having the education of how to actually achieve it. And we spoke about this so much on the podcast, but where people are just kind of in that mindset of like, oh, well, I eat well and I go to the gym and I'm being good, but not actually truly having the education and the understanding of what's required to achieve your goal. Yeah. Know what I mean? Like we we see people spin their wheels a lot where it's like, you know, I'm always trying to be good and I'm eating well and I say no to things and I eat, you know, air quotes, I eat clean and healthy and all of those things. Like go to gym, but they don't have the education. So they don't have like the actual plan for their specific goal, for their personal needs. Like they don't have the structure with their training. How many people go to gym and just wander around and like, oh, I'll walk on this for five minutes and I'll do five reps over here and then I'll pick up this weight. And it's actually very pointless. And I don't want to shame people because if you're making the effort to look after your health or do something good for yourself, like I don't want you to then feel like shit about that. But the point of training is structure and progression. Mm. Like the actual point of training is to go into the gym and complete a session and then like push, obviously push to a certain level in that session and then recover and go back and push again and over time progress that session and progress, therefore like progress your strength and yourself and like your body comp and everything. Again, coming back to the point, like why people aren't achieving their goals. I think people don't understand that and that's just training. Like that's not even talking about nutrition, but I think people just go to gym and honestly wander around and do a few things. And then in their mind, they're like, well, I go to gym like five days a week. Like why the fuck am I not getting anywhere? And that's what's actually shit. Like, that's so shit when you think about it. Like, you are actually busting your ass and you feel like you've got nothing to show for it. So I think the lack of real education and understanding, like, too many people are just being good or eating well and it's just not the answer. Yeah. What was the question? (laughs) I think it was... Why are people not achieving their goals? Yeah, the biggest reason, I think. Yeah, the biggest reason you think people don't achieve their goals. I think it's just not being prepared and like not having a great plan in place. Like you said, like you're going to the gym or you're going for a run or something, like that. you're not really having a great plan to really work on that end goal per se. Well, they're, yeah, goals, really. The people are prepared. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Make today count. Legit. I think the other thing that we see there as well, and again, with this one, take what you want and leave what you don't. But I think for a lot of people, if we think about nutrition, especially, so many people have honestly, and again, take what you want, leave what you want. So many people have somewhat backed themselves into a corner of a life that they don't love. And hear me out. But if people are in a position where they've maybe, I don't even know, racked up some debt, spent a lot of money, whatever it is, they've now had to go get a job that they don't particularly love just to get through that. 
maybe your boss is an asshole. Maybe your partner's an asshole. Maybe your kid's a little shit. <laughs> maybe your friends are shit. Whatever it is, like everyone's going to be different. But I've seen this a lot in like being a nutritionist, but even just in life. If you have made decisions and ended up in this position where you have to get up at a certain time, you have to do shit for other people, whether it's partners, bosses, kids, friends, parents, anyone, you have to be at work by a certain time. You have to go on lunch at a certain time. You have to do the shit that your boss tells you to do. You have to put a smile on your face and pretend you like everybody. And like you said, it's negative and it's toxic and it's shit. And you have to sit there. You have to go home at a certain time. You have to sit in traffic. You have to go home and clean the house, pick up the dog shit, feed the dog, (laughs) do whatever you got to do. You have to go to bed and do it again. If we look at that, there's such, for, for a lot of people, some people might be in that situation and they might love it. So that's absolutely awesome. But for a lot of people, they're in that situation and there's quite a lack of happiness and there's a huge lack of choice and freedom. And if you think about that, if you have to go through your whole day and do shit that you haven't had a really, really don't feel like you've had a choice. I just have to do this shit because that's, you know, the way my life is now set up. There's very little freedom. There's very little choice. There's very little joy. When you get to your lunch break, for some people, their lunch break is the only choice they have in their day. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck would you pick an apple over a Mars bar? If that is the only choice you get to make for the day. Or a pizza or KFC. 100%. Burgers come at me. Everything else is a bloody shit show. I'm having a burger. Yeah. And that's honestly the position that a lot of people end up in. Yep. If you're sitting through your day and you're not enjoying a lot of things and you feel like you don't have a lot of choice, when lunchtime comes around, you're like, suddenly I've got choice. And like I said, why would you pick a salad? <laughs> you pick salad? Shuck is disgusted by the thought of picking a salad. <laughs> Follow question. What's a salad? <laughs> but honestly, that's... Actually, what we see for a lot of people is they are quite unhappy and they feel they don't get a lot of choice in much like many things that they do. And so that is their one thing where, like I said, if they've got that moment in the day where it's like, oh, I can go and choose something and give myself, it's quite a temporary hit of, you know, happiness, endorphins or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. From this meal, of course, they're going to do that. If you haven't really got to choose anything else in your life and you feel like that's... The only outlet you have, you got to pick it every time. Yeah. And I just feel like that is absolutely worth looking at. And we see it all the time. Like even with um, like tradies is a really common one. And I definitely don't want to pigeonhole people because equally I know tradies who are in wicked shape and they like prep their lunches and they, you know, like tradies can be some of the fittest, healthiest people. There's going to be like two ends of the... Oh, well, like it's just how you choose to, what you choose to do with it. But so often we do see tradies that are in that position. Like they do sit in traffic. Their boss is up their ass all the time. Like you're an electrician in a roof eight hours a day, or you're a plumber in a toilet eight hours a day. The highlight of that day is absolutely going to be the food truck. (laughs) Yeah. And rightly so. Where's the lie? Oh no, I'd rather hang out in the toilet than hit up the food truck. Like It's just not even a thing. But that's often the reality. And I'm not saying at all that no one should do a trade bed or no one should do those jobs. But I think it's worth really looking at, like, am I actually in that position where I am, food is really my only kind of choice, freedom, and therefore one thing that I find a lot of happiness with. And that doesn't have to be in a bad way. Like for us, we choose our food. We have freedom with food and we're happy with food. But I don't think you go, like, it's a difference between going through your day miserable and having like lunch or dinner or whatever it is be the highlight of the day yeah. as opposed to actually enjoying other things in your life and enjoying your food and your diet as part of that. Mm. I think that's the difference. So that's coming back to the thing, like why do people not achieve their goals? I think, like we said, there's obviously other reasons, but that can be a reason too where it's just like you actually- Yeah, comfortable doing that. Or you're, you're finding comfort. In food. Legit. Which is just a whole thing to look at. Yeah, I feel like, what are you going to say? I don't want to, I don't want to like offend people or shame people with that. I don't think that that's, that's not something that we want to bash. It's something that we want to be aware of and bring awareness to. It's like, you want to tap into that if that is you and be like, yeah, shit, is that actually the case for me? Legit. Like, honestly, like that was probably me 
four years ago. Actually, yeah, you've told me that and that blew my mind when you told me that. Honestly, like working at my full-time job, same thing, like didn't like the boss. People were like this negative. My own enjoyment was lunch and tea. So <laughs> legit, I would go to Woolies, get fucking whatever it was, chocolate, chips, even go to KFC, McDonald's. <laughs> like that was my own enjoyment. Yeah. And that's, and that's li- some people's reality for 40 years, if yeah. not their whole life. And then light bulb, this clicked. It's like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be too far gone. I need to make a change now in my life. And that's why, before I even left the job, I made big changes in my personal life that really fix that up. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we should interview you one time. You should. <laughs> Coach Shaq goes off. <laughs> no, I feel like that's so, yeah, it's so true. And it sucks, like... I hate the thought that people, like, that's the reality for people. Oh, and, like, you get in this, what is it, like a pigeonhole. Like, like you I, don't realise. Nah, like, yeah, you're blind to it. I didn't realise I was doing half the shit I was doing. Like, <laughs> when I look back at it, I'm like, fuck, I must have been, like, really this tunnel vision. Yeah. Because I honestly, like... Just black blinkers on. Yeah, and, like, you don't really realise the changes you have on your body and your mental shit, like... You don't realise to actually step back and have a look at shit. Like even though some of those photos we're looking at probably a couple of months ago, a heifer. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been a heifer. Well, I think <laughs> well, this we're getting so far off topic. <laughs> well, right now, like a one hundred and five weight, and yeah, over there I was like one twenty eight. Like that's enormous. I feel like you've done that intentionally at times, though, like for gaining phases. Yeah, obviously it's been. Yeah, but they're probably right. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're gone the other way too. Yeah, yeah. Far out. Yeah, there's the onion. It's peeling back the layers. Oh shit! (laughs) There's another quote for you. (laughs) How did you find Shaq? No, that's not even on there. How did you find Shaq? (laughs) Like I just fucking found him on the street. <laughs> it's so funny that you say, how did you find Shaq? Advice for someone who wants to become an online coach. Is that actually what it says? Are yeah. you making it up? <laughs> no, this, that's not me. Advice, what does it say? Advice for someone who wants to be an online coach. Yeah. Become one. Yeah. I think and- in terms of advice, the things I would say, the first thing I would say to people is like, okay, and this doesn't have to, this doesn't have to be the reality, but like, be okay with it taking a while. Like, be okay with doing the work, putting in the work. I think too many people see the online space and they're just like, oh, I'll become a coach and I'll just post a few pics and I'll get clients and it's happy days. And I just don't think it's as easy as people think it might be. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've seen so many people. Countless. Over the years who have, and people close to me, like friends, colleagues like I've just obviously been in this industry for 12 years and I've seen so many people come into it and leave it just as quickly like they just can't make a living and I think that they just thought that it was going to be easier than it was like it's just as simple as posting a photo like posting photos and like I'm taking on clients and now you are fully booked even when we see like I see trainers all the time, PTs, that'll be like, hit me up for macro targets. And I mean, first of all, big insult to a person that spent six years studying nutrition, but whatever. But also <laughs> the thing there is like, it's all well and good to take on someone and say, hit me up for macro targets. The amount of women that I've worked with, I've like been, you know, quote, giving out macro targets, if we want to call it that. <laughs> For six years, you have no idea what you are going to get from that person that week. I have had women show up in the Eat Like Ruby space with like, I'm getting divorced. My partner just left me. I just found out my partner cheated on me. I need to move house. I just got fired. Females that are like, I've, you know, got issues with my cycle. I've got to go see a gyno, (laughs) like all of these things. And the point I'm trying to make is I see a lot of trainers, you know, whether they're males, females, whatever, that are just like, hit me up for macro targets. And it's like, it's all good to tell someone how much carbs and protein to eat this week. 
are you actually prepared when that person turns around at the end of next week and is like, oh, actually, like I'm emotionally eating because my husband just left me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's very easy to put up a story and say, hit me up for targets, hit me up for a meal plan. Like there's a human being on the other end of that. And I think you need to be some level of a human being. Like you need to have, be in a position where like if if that comes back to you as a coach, like if if you're in that position and someone hits you up with a message like that, like a dramatic thing has happened in their life, you're not really talking too much about nutrition and training to that person at that time. And that's kind of a double-edged sword because the point I'm trying to get at is you have to be a person that can then pivot and have a bit of a different conversation with that person, but equally have enough professionalism and enough boundaries and standards for yourself to be like, well, I am actually a nutritionist and a trainer. I am a compassionate human being, but I am not here to give you now relationship advice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the point I'm trying to get at is I think people go one of two ways when this shit comes at them as a coach. So you're like, oh, I'm a trainer now. I'm going to put up my stories, hit me up for a meal plan, whatever. You get a bunch of clients. Everyone follows their meal plan. Suddenly Sally over here hasn't followed the meal plan because she's getting a divorce and she's now in your inbox telling you she's getting a divorce. I think coaches then go one of two ways where they're like, shit, fuck, don't come near me anymore, Sally. (laughs) Just stick to your meal plan. Mm -hmm. Like they don't know how to handle it. Or they're like, oh my God, if you need anything, let me know. Hit me up. Here's my number. (laughs) Like All of these things. And both of those, I personally don't think are the right approach. You have to have like certain systems and things in place and you have to be, I don't know what the word is. Like you have to have the emotional intelligence, I guess you would call it, to navigate whatever's going to come at you for the week. Yeah. And the thing is too, that you've got to remember in this situation, there's no one above me in Eat Like Ruby. If Sally shows up in my inbox, I cannot forward that to anybody else. Yeah. That's in my inbox. Legit. And if I take the day off because I can't be bothered dealing with her, I've got to deal with her tomorrow. Yeah. So I think people forget that too. Like you work in a shop and someone complains and you're like, I'll get the manager. <laughs> this Legit. is above my pay grade. You can't do that in your business. So... I just think it's very easy to put it out there like I'm taking clients or whatever it is and people just aren't ready for like everything that comes with that. And then they either do, like I said, like you don't want to be just a gym bro that has somebody, you know, in your inbox or in your Facebook group or however you run things that is genuinely having an emotionally tough time and you're just like, well, stick to your meal plan. Yeah. But also you don't want to then just open the floodgates and be like, let me know if there's anything I can do for you, whatever. Like, And then all of a sudden you find yourself in this position where you're like, I'm a nutritionist and a trainer, but I've suddenly got, you know, 10 people sending me messages at 10 o'clock at night because they're having an emotionally tough time. <laughs> How did I get here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's probably such a long winded answer for that person. But I think you need to... Yeah, my original thing there was like, like it's not as easy as people might think. Yeah. <laughs> and even like forgetting all that, I've probably just scared everybody off. <laughs> Definitely not. Even in that, like, it's not as easy as you think. I think, I don't know if people think too, like, are they just going to like post those stories or do those things and say, I'm taking clients or whatever and suddenly have like a booming business, business and income. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think people miss a step there as well. Yeah. And I think, I feel like that's the reason that we've seen a lot of people come in to like have a crack at being a coach and then pretty quickly go off and get a full-time job. I think they thought that it was just going to take off a lot quicker than it did. Yeah. You know what? Another word I absolutely love. You show me this word. Congruence? That's a one. Congruence. (laughs) Yeah. How they... Soph's given us the nod. <laughs> She's all about the congruence. <laughs> so, so many people out there now acting like this online, but they're not actually doing that shit. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's, that's a whole that's a whole other thing to it, yeah. Yeah, I actually love that word. Everyone's got to make a living. Like, if, if you're not yeah. getting clients and you've got bills to pay, like, obviously, <laughs> something's not going to work out there. But I think even for me... I did two and a half years as a full-time gym manager. Like the first two and a half years of me working in Eat Like Ruby, I was a full-time gym manager at the same time. 
So I would literally, I was running two businesses for two and a half years and I would work on the gym floor all day, every day, come home at work at night, work weekends. I'd work at three o'clock in the morning. Like you just do the thing. I was not in a position where I was like, oh, I can quit my full-time job and have a crack at a business. Like financially, I was not in that position. Yeah. It had to overlap and it overlapped for two and a half years. Yeah. And then even then, I, when I left my full-time work at the end of 2020, I did part-time gym work for the whole of 2021. Mm-hmm. And I kept scaling that back and back and back more and more. And in the end, like shout out to Jolie because I was literally – air quotes, running his gym, doing four hours a week. (laughs) But like that didn't happen overnight. That happened over such a long time. My first, like, here's a fun fact. The first financial year that Eat Like Ruby declared to my good friends at the ATO was $10,000 income for the whole year, for the year. So obviously, like I said, I was, had a full-time job as well. I didn't live off that, (laughs) but that's wild. Yeah, and not many people would like... Keep going. Yeah, no. And the funny thing is too, and I think I even said this to Soph once, like last year I was just reflecting on everything and like the growth that my company had had and stuff and it's really cool. I went back, my first like foodie post, if we want to call it that, like the first post I did that was under Eat Like Ruby was in April. I can't even think what year. I feel like it was. it would be 2017 if we if I worked it out. My first paying client was in August the next year. So I spent a year and a half posting everything that I still post now, like recipes, shopping, advice, training stuff, videos, stories, all of the things. I don't even know if stories were a thing back then. (laughs) But literally, and if you go through my Instagram now, I think I'm close to hitting like a thousand posts on Instagram. Yeah. That's like a thousand pictures and captions of food. Yeah, legit. Over like six years. And even, yeah, like if you look at that, like I did that first thing in April and I literally showed up in that business every day and did not get paid until August the next year. Imagine if you went to your job in April and they're like, can you actually work every day and we'll pay you in August next year? No one do it. Exactly. But then I literally wouldn't be here. Like. I think that that space has evolved so much that you could move through it quicker just based off of like watching what other people do and do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I didn't really have people to follow and look up to at that time. No one was really doing it. Like I'm sure they were, but not like they are right now. Yeah. So you're just kind of running your own race and like working it all out for yourself. Yeah, I think you could definitely speed up that process a bit more these days. Yeah. But I think people think that it's like straight away I'm going to, be making six figures. It, it just ain't the case. What was the question? What's the advice? Um, <laughs> for if you want to be an online coach. Yeah. Advice for someone who wants to become an online coach. I think we've covered lots of it. I, I think I would also say as well, this is just my personal opinion. Like yep. absolutely take what you want from this. I think I see a lot of people in the nutrition space particularly, who will post things like, here's the vitamin C content of an orange. No one gives a fuck. No one actually cares how much vitamin C is an orange. Actually, I shouldn't say that. A very, very, very small portion of the population probably care about that. Absolutely, I'm sure we could find someone who cares about that. We shouldn't rule it out. But people, like, I love nutrition science. I love nutrition facts. If I was to take the science. Think about all the textbooks that I've shown you with nutrition. Yeah. Right. Imagine if I was to put that shit on a post. No one cares. Legit. Right? Coming back to the vitamin C in the orange. People post things like that. And like I said, no one cares enough for it to like trigger a response in them to be like, oh, I need to work with this person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like really at the end of the day, people are investing their time and their money and their energy into programs or diets or coaches or whatever it is because they see something there that it's like, I'm in this position and this person can get me to where I want to be, right? So if we think about Eat Like Ruby, I would argue that a lot of people see Eat Like Ruby and say, I want to improve either my strength or my performance or my body composition Equally, I love eating Nutella 
and I don't want to give that up, this chick can get me there. Yeah. <laughs> really, Legit. if we think about it. And people probably aren't even aware of that. It's probably like a subconscious thing that happens. But that's that's the thing. Like, And it's not just Nutella. Like, Some of my clients actually don't like Nutella, believe it or not. The point I'm trying to get at is like, you need to talk about shit and talk to people in a way that is actually like something that they want. Like if you're over here like, oh, here's the vitamin C in an orange or this is why brown rice is better than white rice. Again, no one cares. Like white rice just tastes fucking better. Like, so you're not like, oh, this person online said brown rice is better. So I'm now going to invest in them and get coaching from them like they've got all the answers because it's like, you're telling me shit that I actually already know. Like we all learned that in grade three. It hasn't, doesn't have enough effect on my life enough for me to actually act on it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I think I see a lot of nutritionists that will post things like that, that are really like random sort of facts and it's fine. Like it's cool. Post it if you want to. But I don't think you're like engaging people enough to then be like, come with me. Like I can actually help you with something that you want help with. Yeah. (laughs) Shucks, are you taking notes for your business? (laughs) there's probably two sides to that because you do want to have your niche and be like well I actually do want to speak to these things and I want to bring people into my world that can relate to these things so you might have a bit of a niche that you want to speak more to and that's totally fine but I think you just have to you've got to bring value to people whether it's obviously when people are in your paid programs and containers absolutely you want to bring value to those people but even to build an audience and build a business and build a brand like Soph's sitting over there and she's all about the brand. She's giving me the nod. Like if you want people to come into your world and stay in your world, you've got to give them value. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of nutritionists are like, well, I value all of these random nitty gritty facts. So I'm going to post about those, but most everyday people and even people that are into like nutrition and gym and wanting to get in shape and stuff, they don't actually care about those real factual things. They just want it presented to them in a way that it's like, oh yeah, that's actually something that I can pick up and run with and take. Yeah. And it's going to benefit me. And I think people need to bring more content like that. Content like Ruby. Well said. (laughs) Fight her up. Yep. That is it for another episode. I hope you guys got something out of that. I hope we didn't um, <laughs> take things too far away from the question, but I feel like that's what's cool. Yeah. That's, the, that's where the juice is. The juice? <laughs> Shit. Um, I think the Q&As are cool. I think we'll do another one soon. We'll, yeah. we'll just see what, uh, what's happening in yeah. the world. Let's do it. But in the meantime, that is it from us. If you haven't listened to last week's Q&A, you can go back and listen to that one. And then I'll be back next week with plenty more juice. Well done. Oh, well done. Whoop, whoop.